Good morning. This is Vince Lancy with the Gold Fix. It's 8.02, uh, the end of the month. Let's go through, as you can see on the screen where the markets are now, the DXY, the dollar index, is unchanged. Gold is lower again. Um, gold futures to the gold cash market are about a $2.20 spread, reflecting the rollover. Uh, DSFEB, if you're looking at it that way, is about a $6 spread, which is actually pretty steep. Um, but the rollover hasn't even started yet. Uh, December is usually the biggest open interest in contracts. So that will affect the market on a cash flow short term basis. Um, uh, the spread will probably uh, narrow. Uh, it's a contagious spread. And then the market will move after people have rolled over. It's generally what happens. Silver uh, acting like a precious metal, of course. It acts like a precious metal when the dollar is strong and it acts like a base metal. Uh, when stocks are weak. So silver right now is the anti-Goldilocks. Platinum, unchanged. Copper, slightly lower. Um, in the two of the currencies. Let's work around the, let's work around the globe. Uh, and I want to talk, let's work around the globe quickly from a macro perspective as drivers for gold are appearing uh, uh, or asserting themselves, I think, uh, in the more long term. And then we'll move to uh, a quick analysis of an update on where the yuan gold peg is. Um, virtual peg, and we'll give some levels to trade today. Uh, why don't we start with, I have a new friend suggestion, we don't care about that. Okay, um, why don't we start with the market itself, where you're looking at that. We'll throw gold up. All right, all right. So basically, this month, all right, let's work around the globe. Uh, in Asia, the Bank of Japan did not change monetary policy uh, as expected. Um, more importantly, out of uh, as a gold driver, China's economy is definitely slowing, and and the trade tensions with the U.S. are worsening and aggravating their situation. And they had been on a uh, drive to uh, weaken the yuan as a some sort of an offset for the tariffs, as I've mentioned several times here, and I also mentioned that that wasn't working. Uh, so the surge in chinese overnight rates there's a surge in chinese overnight rates and there's an announcement that the pboc will be selling yuan t-bills in hong kong next week that warns of heightened risk and and that also says if they're going to do that to me it says that they're likely to uh, stop uh, weakening the yuan at least short term and i say that because they probably also know it's not doing much and that will have an effect on gold a stronger yuan uh, uh, should stop a gold slide, uh, or at least uh, mitigate it a little bit. Uh, Australia reported soft inflation. Uh, in, it's moving to Europe. We're going to circle back to the yuan in a, in a minute. Um, the UK leaving the EU, aka Brexit, um, is still on the tape. Nothing new to talk about there. Uh, ADP private sector jobs come out. Um, basically, the jobs number. Uh, Loss uh, looking at approximately 180,000 um, versus 230,000 in September, and the employment cost index will keep the focus likely on the U.S. labor market ahead of Friday's non farm payroll report on Friday. Kind of a, a, a peekable. The dollar index made new highs for the year uh, last night today, uh, went actually above 97 for a short period there. Next important technical target, if you're one of those types, is 98. Easy to say. Uh, but I don't trade the dollar. Uh, I don't trade technically. Uh, I think um, uh, on the uh, in the U.S. Um, the stock market, uh, you know, because it has it has whether we see it or not, it has had an effect on gold. Uh, we've had a hard month, uh, a red October, which I'm sure is going to be a big headline uh, again. I think we used it first, uh, but uh, that's neither here nor there. All right, and uh, equities. Are stabilizing going into the month end. Uh, Asia Pacific markets rallied uh, on the back of the U.S. close yesterday. Um, the recovering stock markets are taking money out of safe haven, uh, uh, so-called safe haven bids for bonds, and the ten-year benchmark yields are slightly slightly higher, uh, even though Italy is uh, uh, off five or six basis points. Maybe there's a a bond trade going on there. Uh, the dollar is mostly firmer, as I said. Why don't we go to notes for today? All right. And I want to discuss quickly uh, 
the yuan. All right. Okay. So uh, this is this is uh, important, uh, and we're seeing it happen right now. I want to first direct you to uh, the Sunday post that uh, we put out that I wrote on uh, the yuan peg breaking down. Uh, you'll see uh, that uh, I say conclusion wise. Regression is likely, meaning gold will sell off and or the yuan will rally. Uh, but I also wrote the yuan will not likely was not likely to strengthen anytime soon. Well, it might be strengthening sooner than I thought. Uh, so I think uh, gold and the yuan are going to meet, maybe by gold selling off, or maybe by uh, the yuan rally. It looks like it's going to be a combination of the two. So if you saw, if you see, right uh, there's Sunday. All right, why don't we put it here? Sunday to Monday is there. All right, gold is moving towards the line. And today, Tuesday to Wednesday, is there. So, uh, you know, these, these aren't perfectly uh, replicated. Uh, what's not important is that the lines meet. What's important is that, because you're looking at uh, slope, the slope of the line for Yuan is down, and it is now uh, taking the gold slope down. So why don't we go through... Uh, some numbers for today, all right? As we discussed, 1235 in the post, 1235, kiss 1235 goodbye. Uh, there you have it. We're trading $15 lower than that. Uh, all right, so here we are with Michael Moore's technical numbers. A little bit scattershot today. Uh, he uh, has 1225, at 1225, 30, he uses the COMEX settlement. Uh, he sees uh, a big number at 1214, uh, 12.21. To 1222.40, and uh, for him, there's a gap below the market. I don't really see much reason to buy gold on a, on a on a technical basis. I see more reason to sell rallies if you're working from a one five day perspective. Uh, with the major caveat that I still feel the midterms are keeping a bid in this market for whatever reason. Uh, so if the market is selling off going into the midterms, uh, uh, maybe the midterms are holding up and it should sell off more, whether it sells off more after the midterms or spikes uh, after midterms, I don't know. But uh, uh, I still think that that is a major driver that is actually diminishing uh, before the midterms, which is a little bit surprising. We'll see what happens uh, on Friday. I think Friday will be a big day for gold uh, and the dollar. Okay. From the lower call, uh, recommendation to sell below 12.2140, 12.2240 area. Uh, we are below that, and the 12.32.80 uh, area if we get up there, which is basically the 12.35 area. 12.32.80 was, I think, my actual level to to get short. Uh, I am a little bit upset uh, with myself having called the move, called a move, uh, meaning uh, a, a protracted move, uh, maybe not necessarily an outside week from a from a professional point of view, but it definitely is a range expansion week uh, compared to you know, the first two days were, were were bigger range than last week, I think. Okay, on the downside, look for possible exhaustion 1209.40, 1207.80. Uh, that's a number that's that again engulfs a number that I have 1208. Uh, uh, that's pretty much what I want to uh, uh, stop on. Uh, when we go to uh, all right, gold's hourly chart. Actually, we'll start with the daily. All right, okay, right now. We're in the middle of, uh, we're, at a, we're at a very bad point, in my opinion. Uh, we've broken through, uh, we've broken through the uh, 1220 area, and we're in the teens. And uh, I, you know, on my gravestone, it'll say, you know, gold hates the teens. But here we are in it. Let's see where we end the day. Uh, I think there's a 50 to 70 percent chance that uh, the market. Uh, will skate through these teens by the close or reject them hotly. I think there's like less than a 50% chance that we're going to be settling in the teens today. Uh, this is a uh, gold spot at 220. That's 1219. Uh, and there's your level. I think the market below 1232.80, I think was my level before, uh, gives us, gave us a sell signal. That is happening. Bounces can happen uh, all the way up to 1229, I think, is your first level. If the market continues lower uh, 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 in a protracted way and you have shorts on, I would be covering in the 1208 area. These are these seem very far away. And gold's average daily range is about $8 uh, uh, the last five days. 
Uh, so, so you may tend to say, ah, there's going to be no trade there. That's the thing. Gold uh, for the last uh, seven months from, I'll say, May through August uh, was not a intraday swing trading uh, market. You know, it'd have a $7 range, $1 up, $6 down. $7 range, $1 up, $6 down. $10 range, $2 up, $8 down. So either you were right on the macro secular trend or you were uh, not able to scalp it. Better off scalping uh, futures in other products. Uh, but uh, gold had given us uh, a nice uh, September, October, and uh, half of October uh, uh, signals and scalping. So now we have a, if you're biased lower, you should be selling any bounce, I think, up to 1220, 1222. Uh, so you might want to be considering getting short here with the 12, uh, with the low of the day uh, as a level to buy. Uh, I think if we get through 1208, I think it's good night. Uh, as in we could definitely uh, make new lows. So uh, on an intraday basis, working inside out, you could be a buyer. Uh, you could be a buyer here with a stop out on new lows. You could be, which is obvious. But the reason I bring that up, not glibly, is because last night, uh, again, if you look last night, the buyer wasn't there. So that's two days in a row between 12 and 4 a.m., the buyer did not return, or if he did return, he really didn't buy much. I think that's a signal to commercials who are short uh, and or funds or robot funds that are short uh, to possibly uh, push harder lower. We could see more of that uh, outside of the ADP number, which is due out. Uh, I would like to stay on. Uh, I would like to discuss other things more uh, next week. Uh, we hope to have our technology completely updated so that I can do this seamlessly without uh, uh, dealing with uh, the uh, the iPhone nausea again. Uh, but in the meantime, consider it a folksy uh, uh, moment. I do want to, before we go, alert you to this. There you go. Okay, here's today's number. Here's today's, I'm sorry, here's today's uh, schedule. Uh, 8.30 a.m. roadmap with Larry. Uh, following the 8 a.m. roadmap, we have uh, Tony Greer of TG Markets after Joe Baklovic on grains. Uh, uh, Joe and Tony are uh, uh, team members. Uh, they are experts in their field. Andy the Valve Commodity Research Group uh, is always nice to have on for Reports and quick interpretations of them. The DOE report is out with energy and uh, 2 p.m. Uh, I think uh, uh, if you're a subscriber listening, I think it will be a very good idea. This is something uh, relatively new, uh, but something I think very important. Larry will be available for Q&A on a topic. Subscribers will be able to contact him through the chat room. And uh, if you're uh, not a subscriber, uh, contact us uh, through the website. Uh, and we'll give you directions on how to view. Uh, uh, you probably will. Uh, you should sign up for the newsletter. If you haven't already, uh, why haven't you? All right. So basically, here's a report today. And uh, I have read this already. You should subscribe and read it yourself. Uh, have a good day. Uh, jumping off, the, off now. And I will leave you with where we are post this initial number. Okay. No immediate effect. On the number, the number itself is not that important to me. It's not an important number today, but it is a number uh, just the same. So there you go. Have a great day. Uh, I'm Vince Lancey, and uh, let's have a very good November, uh, and let's just uh, be well. Peace.